All right, everyone. So today, I want to talk about finishing pieces up. So as you work on a piece, your clay goes through different stages. At first, when you encounter it, ideally it's plastic, it's soft, it's malleable. You make stuff out of it. Then it becomes what we call leather hard. It feels like cardboard as it sits and dries. Cardboard, if you think about it, if you pinch a piece of cardboard, it's stiff, but it's still a little bit of flexibility, kind of like an avocado that's just at the right stage for eating. Then as it sits out and dries some more, it becomes what we call bone dry. This is that box I made the other day in one of our other demos. And the clay is completely dry and it's ready to be fired in the kiln. That's like your oven, but it gets really hot. It goes up to around, you know, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, where a normal kitchen oven goes up to maybe five at most 600 degrees. So once it's been bisque fired, which I have a piece of bisque here. This has been bisque. This is a plant. Uh, project I made as a class demo, a little house with a lid, and it's ready to be bisque fired. So this is bisque. After it's been fired once, it becomes bisque, and then you're ready to finish it, to put some type of finish on it. So typically that's glaze, or traditionally that's glaze. At Columbia, we'd have about a dozen different glazes. You would go to the tool crib, that little swatches of clay that are painted with the different colors and you would pick them out and show and look at which colors you want. I recommend you use more than one color, use two or three, it's much more interesting. They'll come in little containers like this, okay, so these, this is glaze and this is what's called underglaze, okay, so they have both of these things. Glaze gets shiny when you fire it. Underglaze stays matte, so this is purple, it'll be sort of a matte purple color, this will be what's called all, a, a brown, Albany Slip Brown is the name of this glaze. It'll become a brown. Typically, I would have a test tile and show you what, look at the test tile to determine if this is the color or what brown does that mean. Brown's a pretty vague description, isn't it? So always, typically, you have little test tiles. Okay, then you glaze your piece. And it's pretty simple. You take your piece and you'll brush on. I'm not going to do it here at the moment, but you'll take a brush. You'll get your little containers of glaze and you'll, they'll have brushes for you there. And then you take them and you brush them on like this. This is pretty simple, straightforward, basic stuff. You brush it on, and you want to put two to three coats of it on. If I put one coat on like this, I'll put another coat on like this. So I try to get a nice, even application. This stuff thins out with water if it's too thin or too thick. And also, if you get it somewhere where you don't want it, then you would take a, a damp sponge and wipe it off. Okay. So glaze cannot go on any part of your piece that's touching anything else when it's fired. Otherwise, it'll fuse to whatever it's touching. So if I glaze the bottom of this and put glaze on this edge and then put my lid on here, it'll fuse to the piece. So I don't want to put any glaze here or under here where they're sitting together. Or I should fire them separately. Or most importantly, what that means is don't put glaze on the bottom of your piece. It'll fuse to the kiln shelf. So what you'll do is you'll, if you get glaze on, you wipe it off with the sponger. Don't, don't put any on there. And also, it's better not to go all the way down to the bottom edge. Otherwise, that edge can also stick to the kiln shelf. Okay, that's possible. So I usually glaze a piece a little bit up from the bottom edge. If a bottom of something has to be glazed, they have what's called kiln furniture. It's little stilts, little things you put your pieces on. Best not to glaze the bottoms of your piece, but if you must, then you got to put a note on it, let them know. Now, if for those of you who are social distancing and you want to minimize your, um, your appearance or you're coming into campus, you can also use other types of finishing things. I'm open to that idea if you want to finish stuff off. Now, you could always come in outside of a class and do glazing, but... Uh, if you don't want to even do that, you can use other materials. So what I have a few examples. This is an example of some of the glazes that we have here at Columbia. Um, you know, they're very bright, colorful, you know. And I put this on with a sponge. I didn't brush it on. So you can see there's sort of a, a gradation from the orange to the yellow because I used a sponge to dab that on. So you can come up with other little techniques for putting your glaze on. Don't just pour all over your piece. You could flick it on. If you have a toothbrush handy, which I had around here, you can dip your toothbrush in your glaze and flick your finger across the toothbrush and they'll create little specks 
a blaze on there. This is blaze on there, but it's a very kind of sedate, you know, there's actually kind of a very light gray and a white blaze on here, so it's a very subtle effect, you know. Another option is waxes. I like using waxes on my piece. I don't always want to glaze things, so I'll wax pieces a lot of times. So this just has shoot, uh, just clear wax on it, like bowling alley wax, floor wax, shoe, clear neutral shoe polish wax, any of those things. Mink oil is a type of wax used on, on, um, on uh, shoes or boots, but you can use them on your pieces. Another thing you could use is acrylic paint. I use acrylic paint. When I'm starting to make a piece, even before I make it, I think about, it's one of my dogs, I think about what, what, how I want to finish it, even at that stage, okay? So this has uh, oil paint on it. So I use oil paint. I thinned it out with some paint thinner and put it on here very thinly so I get this nice sort of greenish patina on the piece, you know. So that was my vision for the piece. Um, so again, there's different ways you can uh, match these, put these together. You can put acrylic paint on it, and then you can put shoe polish over that. And the beauty of the shoe polish, you can buff it up, so you get a nice little sheen to it. It doesn't have to be glossy. These glazes they have at Columbia are rather glossy. If you don't like that really glossy effect, then you can add an underglaze, and then you can put a clear neutral wax on top of that. And I'm open to the idea of you finishing things off differently or in other ways, because again, I would say that our glazes at Columbia are somewhat minimal and uh, I am not a traditional ceramic artist in the way that you know I like to finish things off I like to think of what my idea behind the piece what my vision of the piece is and then finish it off that way that's what determines it here's another piece I have here it's a shoe it's made of clay clay we use at Columbia and I have um, I actually have gold leaf and silver leaf on here I melted glass on it when I fired it. So there's glass and there's metallic glazes too. Those are specialty glazes you can buy, but if you're going to try using them, you got to tell them because they fired a very different temperature than the normal glazes that you're going to see at Columbia. Okay. So anyway, there are some possibilities. I'll be talking more about this and uh, when I see you in class, I'll be doing an in-person demo. But this will give you some basic information. Again, for those of you who are still social distancing, I get it, and that's okay, but I would like you to think about how you might want to finish pieces, which means you would bring your piece in and get it bisque fired, and then you could take it home or somewhere else and try other things, okay? All right, everyone, thank you. Um, again, uh, I'll be sending out, uh, well, you'll be getting information from me as time goes through the semester, all right? And you can find all this information on Canvas. Thank you.